Eckhart. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who, public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov, that's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will, will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Doug. I'm here. Helly. Here. Gaston. Here. I am here. And we're just waiting for Dylan. So four here and one absent. Um, the next up is public comment. And this is general public comment unrelated to anything on the agenda. Does anyone have anything, um, any public comment of that type? If so, raise your hand by hitting the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And no public comment. Okay. So we can go right into um, licenses. A, special short-term look-in licenses, SST-23-15. Jake, I hope I'm saying this right. Is it Mazar or Mazar? Heartbeat Collective, February 11th, 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., 383 Main Street. And the manager is Stephanie Gibbs. And this one um, has, so this is, this is being held at the restaurant, but it is involves the, the nonprofit called the Heartbeat Collective. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Hi, this is Jake. Hi. Oh, hi, Jake. Welcome. And just if I may uh, qu uh, clarify, this is not technically a restaurant. It was a restaurant and it's configured as such, but I think they, they usually use it as just a catering base of operation. Is that correct, okay. Jake? Yeah, that's right. So we're, we're a catering company. Um, we have a 12C liquor license and we do a lot of wedding catering is mostly what we do. Um, some in Amherst, but a lot in towns around, um, not in Amherst. Um, and so, yeah, it's the former Lumberyard restaurant, but for us, it's the base of operations for our catering company. Um, and we don't frequently use it for our own events, but we're hoping to do one um, in a week and a half. Okay. Um, thank you. Did everyone have a chance to look over the um, the statement about the relationship between the Heartbeat Collective and the catering company, and um, also the I think there's a nonprofit statement and the liquor license itself. So if you haven't, I think Steve sent something just before the meeting, uh, a statement about the relationship between the two. So if anyone has any questions, well, I just have that. a question. Okay. So. It said any funds are going to go to the Heartbeat Collective, or you can have a cash bar, or is there a ticket to get in the door, or how is it going to run? Yeah, it's going to be a cash bar, um, and then we'll donate profits from the buying. I don't know how busy it'll be, um, but we'll donate some profits to the Heartbeat Collective. Um, but it'll be a cash bar, no, no door cover charge or anything like that. Okay. Oh, Gaston, go ahead. I think I, I'm. I'm just. I'm concerned with the syntax you you just used. You said that you're going to donate some of the profits. I mean, the my, my understanding is that if to get the full alcohol license, it really should be the the nonprofit in charge and putting up the cash, unless somebody's donating uh, the cash for the liquor, and then they receive 100 percent of the proceeds. So I, I don't know if that's what you contemplate. Oh, so just to cover, I, I meant to say we're donating 100% of the profits. You know, like we, I want to cover the staff, the cost of having our staff and the cost of actually buying the alcohol. But yeah. anything you know above and beyond that, which hopefully we have something, will be donated. All, all of that, all of the additional, the actual profit of the event will be donated to the Heartbeat Collective. Thank you, Th thank you, Jake. I, I wonder, as a matter of formality, if um, you could basically. Uh, reg and I think it might actually be to your tax benefit to register um, a donation to the nonprofit of the amounts that you spend on the alcohol and paying your staff. So in other words, you're making that donation to them and then they receive the cash, then the money never goes through you after that. You follow me? Um, but then we would, you're saying we would donate the alcohol and the labor for the event? 
Right, that's a donation. Then it's a tax, tax deductible donation. And then they just get 100% of the proceeds. Well, we were hoping to break even on the, like we were hoping to break even and not, um, you know, lose money on the event. Yeah, that's, and you're, you're kind of putting us in a tough spot because, I mean, it wouldn't be a problem if it's just a beer and wine event. So, I mean, I guess the nonprofit could pay the staff, I assume, like they could pay the staff for it. And that'd be, that way it all goes through them and not, it's not through us, but they're the ones kind of, you know, covering that end of it. So it's, you know, it, you know, our staff are the ones that have the tip certifications and all that. So I, I wouldn't want to, yeah. you know, have random right. bartenders there who aren't trained. Um, but I think we could work it out that way if that, you know, makes it easier to get the all, all, all liquor. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a little bit like uh, Islamic finance. You kind of go through these hoops to, so that formally there's no interest or something like that. I think if, <laughs> if you could, um, if they can pay, if they can be on the hook for the staff, and then I guess you're saying maybe you donate the alcohol, um, but then basically they keep the difference between proceeds and staff. That 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 seems to check out for me. Yeah. Does that work for everybody else? Uh, Doug. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah. Dylan. Sound okay? That's good to me. Yeah. So, is there anything else we need to add to this to do that, or is that just that's on their side? Or anything, Steve, that we'd have to change. Um, so I guess just to clarify, Gaston, you're suggesting that, um, and, and to be clear, the Wheelhouse Farm is not a party at all in this. Jake Jake Mazar as an individual is. Right. Um, so I guess can you clarify what what exactly you're suggesting, Gaston, so I can put well, it in the record I mean, here. I guess the first thing is just that for the economics, Jake, is are you comfortable basically? Um, uh, uh, donating the the liquor as as long as your staff is covered is that does that work for the vision you had? Well, we're also selling food and stuff too. So are you saying we should donate? No, the food separate or... the, Just keep, keep the food separate. You do, deal with the food however you want. Yeah, I mean, sure, we can we can donate the alcohol if that's. I, I mean, they can the nonprofit can also pay for the alcohol. It's just the matter of basically the. The, the the they get the they get the payments that's the if you can set it up so that they get a, a hundred percent of the proceeds minus, minus whatever they're on the hook for then i think we're in the clear okay yeah we can do that and the food's totally separate though we could run the food that's just through yeah. us right yeah 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 yeah, okay. yeah yeah well jake the um the alcohol goes through you as an individual so you personally will have to get it from the wholesaler um and then return whatever excess is. It has to. It can't go through the twelve C or anything else like that. It has to go through you as an individual. Um, does that make sense? And then the food, whatever the food is, not a not a really a question here. You can do whatever you want with that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, and we I already have the relationships with the wholesalers, but I guess yeah, I just have to. I guess I would yeah. use yeah, I would send them the one day license and say we're purchasing this using the one day license, not using the twelve C. Exactly. Is that yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, if not, um, is there a motion to approve a uh, special short-term liquor license SST-23-15? So moved. Thank you, Doug, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan, any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote, Hallie. Aye. D uh, Gaston. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye, that is five to zero and the license has been approved. Thank you very much for coming in and best of luck with your event. Thanks, thanks for your help talking that through and, and uh, figuring it out, appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. Okay, so the next up is two common victualler, victuallers license renewal applications, um, Keeney's Nutrition and what is this one? Hold on. And Oh, that Insomnia is, uh, Cookies. House of teriyaki. Oh, that's House of Teriyaki. Okay. And then uh, Insomnia Cookies. Is anyone here to talk about these? Are there any questions or we're just renewing them? These are just straight renewals. So straight I don't think they are coming. Okay. So if no one has any questions about these, is, done. Yeah. Can you yes. repeat again? I'm, I'm looking at the at the agenda and I'm seeing Keeney's Nutrition is K, doing business K's. Oh, and yeah. I'm, 
I'm not seeing House of Teriyaki at all. Oh, um, you know what? I wasn't looking at the agenda. That's on. That's going to be in the next one. House of Teriyaki. So who is? What is K's? Um, it's down on. Uh, is that that? That, that came in. That, the initial application for that was just a couple of months ago. It's yeah. near um, Spirit House, right? In or that oh, across it's the street. near that. Oh, I think it's okay. At the bank oh, on the yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. In that All complex. Right. Oh, it's yeah, that I place. I don't know if they've even opened yet, but he did get a common vic. Um, okay. Maybe like October. Right. He right. In, he was younger. Okay. That's this is that uh, smoothie thing, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, um, so is there a motion to approve two common victuallers? Yes, Doug, thank you. I'll, I'll move to approve uh, Kenny's right. nutrition, doing business as K's, and Baked Amherst uh, MA Operators LLC, doing business as Insomnia Cookies, for the renewal of their common victualler license. Great, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, is there any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye, um, five to zero. The licenses have been renewed. Great, okay. So on to discussion items. So last, so who was, so Hallie was not here and Doug was not here? Doug was not here. And so BYOB came up and Steve has sent around a copy of our current BYOB regulations. And Steve, you said somebody wanted to yeah, so um, this Go was um, to... yeah, this was mentioned to me by uh, Arthur Haskins, who um, works at uh, W.D. Coles, the mill district up there, and mm -hmm. um, he looks like he is here, so I will um, we'll oh, bring him right. in, but he uh, had some comments he wanted to make to the board about the current BYOB regulations. Okay, great. Welcome, Mr. Haskins. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. yep. Great, great. Thank you. My name's Arthur Haskins. As Stephen uh, mentioned in the introduction, I work for W.D. Coles. I'm managing the... Uh, recent development efforts within the Mill District and North Square at the Mill District development. Um, today, I'm joining um, to make that request related to the current BYOB regulations. Um, I speak on behalf of our Mill District businesses, specifically Cisco's Cafe at 68 Coles Road. Cisco's recently went through the BYOB approval process with the initial application just recently in November of 2022, holding a common victualler's license and formally permitted by this board to conduct BYOB at Cisco's Cafe. Um, it's been going really well. So today, uh, Francisco and the Mill District would like to further um, Cisco's growing partnership with our other uh, tenant provisions wine at the Mill District at 113 Poles Road to cross promote both. In essence, they're looking to um, extend. So currently the hours permitted by the BYOB regulations begin at 12 noon and end at 11 p.m. We'd like to request the addition of some morning hours so that the BYOB is made permissible between 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. Um, for overall Amherst business, economic development, um, other businesses with formal BYOB licensing may see an opportunity to extend their own morning hours and offerings um, this change could potentially cater to our community third shift folks. And in addition, I learned just this afternoon that our Amherst bid put forth their own support too for this proposed change. Speaking with Gabrielle Gould this afternoon and the, the bid endorses this specific policy change request. Um, I should further mention that Cisco's Francisco Perez, the owner, is also contemplating an eventual full liquor license, um, similar to what our previous tenant Jake's at the mill had at this address. Uh, but before going through that uh, further steps, the expense for additional staff, TIP certifications, and insurance coverages, Francisco would like to start uh, with trying the BYOB promotion with provisions during some morning hours, so long as this board would potentially permit this BYOB regulatory change. Um, no other changes whatsoever are proposed to the existing BYOB regulation or Cisco's existing and approved management plan um, approved back in November. Okay. Thank you. Um, so what was the morning day? That was 9 a.m.? That's right. So today it's from noon to 11 p.m. Right. And we had a brunch promotion we were bouncing around that made us realize that uh, that's not permissible as it stands today. So um, in order to do things um, uh, where they're cross-promoting the provisions, I should mention today provisions is at 113 Coles Road, um, that barn-style building at the Mill District. We're in the midst of the approval process to move 
provisions wine across the village green to go into the North Square um, development building at 75 Poles Road, which would place them directly across the road from Cisco's. So it seems like a natural tie together for the two businesses to try to promote this um, together. And so this that's what prompted this request. Okay, so the was so the idea is that they would go to provisions, buy a bottle of something at say nine thirty, and then walk back across to Cisco's, sit down, and have brunch. Is that the idea? That is the idea. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, great. Any other questions? Any? Yes, okay. Gaston. I just wanted to make sure that apart from the time, everything else in the BYOB regulation works for you. Entirely, that's correct. Um, we've we've reviewed the entire regulation again before this uh, meeting, and the only thing that we are requesting is just the additional morning hours. So, what does everybody think? And, and finally, just I, I, yeah, I, I missed the fact: is it for every day, or is it a particular day of the week? Oh, yeah, good point. Um, we didn't want to limit ourselves today. Um, it, it was started with a brunch promotional, but um, you know, Cisco's is closed Mondays at present, and um, he's very new, so he's still adjusting and and uh, making slight changes to his own business, unrelated, you know, for in regard to hours and such as he perceives and and gets the lay of the the land as far as the uh, the the customer um, and and the and the timing. So we didn't want to limit, so we were hoping to just do a overall um, addition of morning hours or to the BYOB regulation if possible. Yeah, and just want to confirm that um, while it's natural for your your guests to purchase right there next door, you're open to whatever booze they may bring. That's right, so long as it complies with uh, BYOB uh, okay. and regulation and also Cisco's current plan, which very much aligns with, with that as you had approved uh, in November. Thanks, Kelly. Two comments. I personally feel very comfortable amending our regulations, maybe to match what the regulations are for alcohol, uh, alcohol being served in sold in restaurants. I feel like that might be a fair compromise. And maybe since provisions will be having hard alcohol soon, could at least just there be some sort of notice po posted there and at Cisco's about what is allowed for BYOB, just so that there's no confusion for customers? Yes, um, we've actually began with posting some of the more uh, basic FAQ style BYOB regulations for the general public as they walk through the door. And in addition, per our management plan with Cisco's, a full copy of the full management plan pages related to the BYOB policy is right next to the register, um, uh, readily available as well. That explains the malt and, and wine um, products that are permissible and, and claims what is not. Wonderful. So is that, Steve, I don't, Never mind. Any other questions about this? Um, do we want to think about this for a little bit? Um, Yes, Doug. So I would just say I'm, I'm looking at the regs and we have it from noon to 11. I think the intention behind that noon to 11 is we were thinking, well, we want it to be with a meal, which we require essentially in the second bullet of the sort of particulars of the general regulations. So I think that, you know, brunch is a, a natural extension, I think. So to the morning hours, I don't know that I would necessarily want to go much later than 11 at this point, but I think certainly adding the morning hours is, seems reasonable to me. And again, you know, because I think if we go to the full liquor license allowable hours, it'd be potentially as early as 8 a.m. to like 1 or 2 a.m., which is maybe a bit broader than than we should for, for BYOB, I think. I think it, it can be a little more constrained personally, but um, but I could be convinced otherwise too. But I don't I don't see the extension into the morning being problematic given the other parts of the regulation we have. Okay, great. Um, Dylan, and do you have any opinions on it or? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of, uh, agree with Doug. I guess my only caveat on that would just be 1030 rather than 11, just for that reason of, you know, make it that someone can come in just a couple minutes before 11 without skirting it. Um, but I, I think the reasoning is, is pretty sound. I think the idea of BYOB, you know, to 1am is, is maybe a little excessive as well. So I, I think it holds in the other direction. So okay. I'm fine if we're uh, 
I was going to say, I, I'm fine if we're the, the uncool town that just won't let people bring their own beers to, you know, a 9 a.m. breakfast. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? So, Steve, do we, would we vote on this now? Do we need to so I think we would um, announce it to the pump? The... Yeah, I think we would probably want to um, notice it as, you know, amendments to um, the uh, BYOB regulations, and we can maybe have a, um, a red line version um stating you know what those changes would be okay all right so um, we, could... we should probably look i mean hallie if i was taking your point i mean i i don't i think sunday you can't serve alcohol before 10 i think right i, I, could I believe be. that's what it is yeah, yeah. right so maybe we would so we would want to make byob before actual liquor licenses um so maybe we can um so the 16th i think we will have a pretty tight agenda but we could put it on there as another discussion item and maybe have a red line draft and go over and maybe okay. um, then on uh, March 2nd, we could have a, uh, you know, vote for approval or okay. vote for uh, to change the regulations. Does that sound good to everybody? Doug? Yeah, I, I, a, I think it sounds good. The B, I think the other thing just as far as sort of getting information out is, you know, Steve, if you could um, reach out to those common VICs that, that have the, the uh, BYOB, you know, sort of addition to their CV so that, you know, because they're particularly going to be interested in knowing this, I think, because it may mm -hmm. be helpful or harmful. They may have opinions about it. So those would be folks I'd be interested that we directly contact via email or something like that, just so they're aware. They may all ignore it. They would be like, great, I'll start at 10 or 9.30 or whatever we decide is the start time that makes sense. And Or if we have to get a little more nuanced to avoid, you know, like we decide 9 a.m. is okay, then we have to like put in language around Sunday or something like that. But yeah, did, um, I guess I was uh, looking down at the minutes. Was there a consensus about what times we would be using for a red line draft, or is this something maybe we can talk about again at the next? Um, I think what we were interested in, as far as I recall, putting it in line with the current liquor, liquor license holders for restaurants, um, which seems, I think, all right, fine to me. Um, Dylan said maybe 1030 at night instead of 11, but um, why don't you just match it up to the, the current liquor license holders? Does that sound good to everybody? Well, there's a, um, it depends on the, the individual license. I mean, the maximum uh -huh. would be- Oh, I mean, I mean the have, we do- Like the, like the, you know, the, the brunch for what we did for the kind of the brunch law, not, not until one in the morning, but until, yeah. right? Yeah. The, oh, the, uh, the food service thing? Yeah, the food service thing. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then that that so that be I think that's we can look what as for for at night, and then what about in the morning? I guess um, I guess we can stew on this and come back. Yeah, um, I'll give you guys those figures, and we can we can discuss it again at the next meeting. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, any other questions, Mr. Haskins? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, super. Thank you so much for coming in. And. Um, so we'll look forward to that. And next up is rental registration. Um, last at our last meeting, Mandy Johanneke was here, and we went through um, all of the things that she was uh, and asked lots of questions, what she was looking for uh, for the next iteration of um, rental regs. She said she would send us the most recent um, draft that they had, but I haven't received one. Gaston, have you gotten anything from her yeah. since our last meeting? Yeah, no. So, um, but I think we were kind of got some clarification and especially about the appeals process, which I thought was really interesting. So, because and there was some sort of thing where we would be taking, and Gaston, you brought this up, that we'd be getting our information from Rob Mara and then he would potentially um, issue the violation or the try to pull away the rental license from, and then they would appeal to us and we would have to go to Rob. <laughs> so it was sort of a, um, a potentially interesting situation which might never happen. But um, I think we've accepted, uh, are inclined to accept the kind of sort of ceremonial office of the rental appeals board as it may be. And they are going to be, Mandy said they have that, what was the name of it again? It's the, the little board they created under the, the select board, which was never staffed. And they are going to, they're going to staff it now. And um, 
again, we'll see how it goes. So um, any questions about this? And we're just, we'll just wait for Mandy's, the CRC's current draft, and then we can go into it. And they are looking to have the, uh, the regs sent up to the town council, I think in March, was that right? She said, at the earliest, we'll see how it goes. So yes, Doug. Just as a reminder, um, I think we got sort of initially involved in this because we we're talking about short-term rentals for like Airbnb yes. and that. So this is still yes. inclusive of that concept of those those uh, businesses and and trying to uh, bring some frame of of reference onto those and and some some oversight so that you know they're operating in a same or similar fashion to longer-term rentals and that sort of thing. I presume. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they also, I think we're also going to be in charge of, so, oh, the other thing is that the town council is going to decide and set the fees and the regulations, and then they're going to turn them over to us, and we are going to have the power to change them, apparently, as we see fit, and I did ask her, we won't need town council approval to change them, we just, and apparently we're going to have, uh, the, do the fee setting and be in charge of the fees because we have been in charge of setting fees and seem to be more comfortable with doing that. So, um, so there, so that's what's going on. Um, is there anything else I missed, Steve or Gaston or Dylan? No, okay, um, great. So police enforcement, we also had Chief Livingstone and uh, because we had the ABCC coming through town recently and uh, he was surprised. He said in the past, in a, he's, apparently there, there may have been a staff change at the ABCC that he said apparently they had a very close relationship. He said they didn't call it enforcement. He said it's compliance checks and the ABCC would let the police know that they were coming in. Um, they would go around to different places and check, make sure that everyone was in compliance. They wouldn't just hit one place, they would go to everybody to make sure that nobody was targeted. And um, he uh, that seemed to work pretty well for them. He is not sure what has happened and he is going to reach out to the ABCC and see if um, he can figure out what's going on. So, um, but um, yes. I'm, I'm just curious and I'm sorry I missed the last meeting, but, but um... Did he express some concern about the change in how the ABCC is operating? Did that cause him some pause relative to, to the operation? I mean, certainly a heads up that they're in town would be helpful just so. Yeah. Purposes, yeah. But I mean, also just, it sounds like they, they operationally are, are, are functioning a little differently. Did he have concerns about that? that um, I think he was, well, he, yeah, I think he was a little uncertain about the whole thing. Um, I think in the past, he said that because they usually ABCC people are in, they're in plain clothes and they would go in with an officer because he said the situation could become, could escalate very quickly if an ABCC person went in and said, you know, you're, I'm writing you this ticket for a violation or I'm taking the report. And um, so he was concerned about everyone's safety, I think. Yeah, um, and, yeah and that was- to, to that point, I think that was some yeah. of the report we read of, I, forget, I think it was at Hazel's uh, Blue Lagoon Yes. Yeah, there was a bit of conflict between the yes, there was, officer yes, and the there. UBC officer because they're like, who the heck are you? Exactly. And I think that's that sort of bolsters the the, the statement that the that the chief made relative to that. So right. So um so he's gonna go try to figure out what is going on. And I don't know if he's going to get back to us. Steve, do you remember? Chief Livingstone. Uh, yeah, um, I think maybe we could re like see check in with him at some point yeah i was thinking the same thing i'll check in with him um okay and i can certainly get an update so it was interesting to hear how they had operated in the past uh, with the abcc because it is very different from what has happened in the past year where i think we've had what three or four maybe three I think three. Hobos, three yeah and then spoke. i think at the spoke and then hazel yeah so um and then the Panda East thing was a different, it was a different thing. Um, because I think that initially came through the police department and then they got in touch with the ABCC. So anyway, so that was, that was very interesting. And Steve will check in with Chief Livingstone about that. And is there anything else on this topic about that? No, okay. 
Great. Um, conflict of interest law training. And Steve, you sent around a document about this. Yes. So um, the conflict of interest law is um, is something that we uh, all have to comply with. You are all considered municipal employees for the for the uh, purposes of the law. Um, and um, so you do have to do the uh, the the um, the conflict of interest law training from time to time. Um, there was a PDF included in your packet from the town clerk that uh, covered it very well. Um, and it's just an online training program. I haven't done it yet. It used to be very entertaining with a guy with the, the strongest Boston accent I think I've ever heard on earth um, yeah. going through conflicts and things like that. But um, hopefully it still is entertaining, but it is really good stuff to know. I mean, with the, you know, living and working in a small town, it's pretty easy to, to kind of accidentally trip yourself up and some of the provisions um, are, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, not accept big burlap sacks with a dollar sign on them for your vote, but there's a lot of other things that um, are more subtle and uh, it's good to, to catch up on that. And I, th I think you probably all had to do it when you first joined the board, but it's mm -hmm. good to be reminded of it from time to time. And um, I believe it's a requirement. So um, yeah, you can take a look at the PDF and, uh, and um, get started with that. It should just take certainly less than an hour. Okay, great. Yes, Doug. Do we, do we have a deadline we need to have it completed by? Um, I mean, I'm not going to put it off like six months, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I months. believe it has to be done every year. I don't think there is a specific deadline, okay. but um, they are, the town clerk is trying to, they do, they do chase people down, so. Okay. okay. All right. So, so everyone, so if you're, if you have a town clerk coming after you, you will know why. Okay. Um, all right. Upcoming meeting schedule and agenda. So this is. The six, when are we? The 16th of February already. And Steve, what is, do we have new licenses? Yeah, so we have a bunch of stuff coming up. So um, unfortunately, uh, next, the, the 16th will have to be um, only an hour because um, oh, both right. I and Dylan will have to go to the ZBA, which is bouncing around. I'm helping to cover for that at the moment. Okay. Um, and um, so, that, that will uh, have to be only about an hour, but um, I think that should be fine. We, I did, um, we were, we were, I talked with Marion about potentially moving that around so we'd have a bit more time, but I had to um, get the notice out to, for the, an application that came okay. in, which I'll talk about in a minute to meet the statutory requirements. So uh, that application is for a um, uh, burger bar, Amherst Burger, burger Company, I think it's called, which will be going in where Ichiban used to be, or Shanghai Gourmet, I think was the most recent tenant of that space. Um, mm -hmm. But um, Barry Roberts, who is the owner of that building, will be involved in that operation. Um, they're going for the full liquor license. Um, okay. And um, we can also maybe, I don't think that will take a full hour, so we can also maybe touch upon um, the, uh, the BYOB stuff as well. Um, and okay. then coming up after that, um, which would be March 2nd, um, we will have... Um, an application from uh, two applications from the spoke one to change the manager on their current liquor license and one to um, uh, they have a new liquor license so he has um, purchased the former old town tavern building there I think there also used to be a laundromat maybe another unit there and he's uh, leased the entire thing and um, he is applying to open a large um, 400 capacity nightclub so um, that is uh, also been submitted to ZBA and um, his liquor license application is ready. So um, or just about, so I think that will probably be going on for then. I figured that would be a longer discussion than the uh, the burger bar one, so. Yes, okay. So next next meeting, we just have the burger bar and maybe a red line version of the BYOB law. And um, if Mandy Johanneke sends around um, another draft, we can put it on. We plan. We don't have to put it on. Or maybe we just well, we send it around. We can certainly put put whatever on, and if we don't get to it, okay. we don't get to it. I don't know okay. how long that application will last. So. Okay. Um, All right. Okay. Great. Um, anything else? Any other topics? Do we just want to dug? I think the other one that will come up because it's coming up in March is the expiration of the of the uh, remote meeting uh, option. Oh, 
Yeah. Um, and I haven't heard, uh, you know, every meeting like this I've gone to, everybody's like, well, we're not sure what they're going to do. And nobody said anything. So, I, you know, it, it seems as though, you know, the, the legislature and the governor have not, you know, thought about it anyway, I think. I don't know. Um, but it, it, we just need to be prepared to, to start meeting in person. I, I can't remember exactly when the exception or the exemption ends. I don't think it's the 1st of March. I think more it's like the 15th. But Steve, do you recall? I don't know exactly when it is, no. And um, I haven't heard anything either, which is surprising. Yeah. Um, personally, I kind of doubt they'll get rid of it entirely because I think there may be um, a crowd of town board members and town managers surrounding the uh, Beacon Hill with pitchforks. But um, yeah. I guess it remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, I think my, my personal opinion is there are certain meetings that I go to that are well served by uh, remote participation uh, and and uh, and others that are less well served. So, you know, I think for us, I think it's a matter of, of uh, if they allow for remote, then I think we need to have a debate about, you know, how do we want to do it? Does it's what serves the public best and what also is functional for us as a group? There was um, an interesting editorial in the gazette about this um a couple two days ago i sent to um steve maybe steve maybe you could forward it on yeah absolutely basically saying that like the the, the hybrid stuff is not being done well mm. no those are generally not well done i think the, the the concern with staying with fully remote is it does preclude some people from joining Mm -hmm. you know either by technological hurdles or financial ones this of course right. like simple cases but you know then again yeah i don't know enough is it possible to do a once a month hybrid and once a month in person or is it all or nothing or i guess we won't know until they update the regulations yeah i think it's going to depend You know, for, for something like ZBA, I feel like that would always be better served by being uh, in person. But I, I like in-person meetings personally, but, you know, I definitely see the convenience of it. I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, wear my hoodie up to, <laughs> up to town hall. Well, I mean, I could, you know. Yeah, no one's going to stop you. <laughs> no one's going to stop you. That's right. Right. It's a pretty informal town, but. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I have some where the, the meetings actually like in Springfield and sometimes they're short meetings. So it's, you know, 40 minutes of driving each way for mm -hmm. a 30 minute meeting. That's Ugh. kind of drag. Yeah. yeah. You know, but we'll see how it plays out. I would, yeah, I would anticipate. And again, this is purely my own speculation, but I would anticipate that if they are going to just end it or there's going to be major changes, they'll probably extend it for a month or two as it is anyway, because um, it is getting close and these meetings get scheduled so far ahead that, um, you know, there needs to be some time to turn the ship around. So, right. um, you know, I guess we'll have to just keep an eye on that. And if we get an announcement, we'll just have to discuss the, the meeting schedule. Okay. Um, so topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. And there are, I guess one thing that was uh, about Garcia's the manager. Yes, so um, I just wanted to pass along to you yesterday, um, the manager of Garcia, the, the liquor license manager of Garcia's um, just came in and told me that she would um, no longer be working there and she wanted to remove her name from the license. And unfortunately, she can't really do that. It has to be the, the applicant who does that. Um, mm -hmm. and I guess she could be a signatory. I guess she does technically have the power to sign applications being the manager, but we'll, in any case... Um, um, so uh, yeah, I, I let her know that you know that that's going to have to be changed. But um, she just wanted to pass that along and and um, you know kind of absolve herself of any liability if something happens. And I told her she could write a, a statement to the board stating as such, and and we would reach out to the um, owners to to begin uh, designating a new manager. But I thought I would just pass that along. Okay, thank you, Doug. Just uh, so you didn't get an opportunity today to to reach out to to them and say, hey, what's going on? And how quickly can you get a, a manager uh, in place? No, I back to back meetings all day today, but I was expecting an email from her with that statement and didn't get it. So maybe I will give both of them a call tomorrow and try to sort out where everything is, but they will certainly have to apply for a new one. Okay. 
And the other thing, uh, Steve, you sent around the newspaper article about the lottery in Northampton, right? Um, the liquor license lottery. I did not actually, but oh, I, I did. Didn't, I did mention that. that to you. But that is something interesting. You, you, you all might want to hear is that um, one of the uh, attorneys for an applicant for the um, the coveted all alcohol license did pass along that Northampton had done a lottery um, mm -hmm. at some recent time. So um, I just thought it was interesting. I sent I sent along to Brian Riley and asked him what he thought, but um, I don't know if different interpretations of law and correct interpretation yeah. of law what it may be. But um, I just did think it was interesting. Yeah, guess what, so. I'm just curious uh, what the update is on applications, Steve. So far, we have one in. Another one should be shortly forthcoming, and I believe there's another one out there. But um, so far, the only mm -hmm. one to formally submit has been Cushman Market. So the okay. deadline is the 22nd, I believe. Yep, 22nd. Okay. Super. Any other topics? Nope. Okay, our next meeting is February 16th at five. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. I'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. We're adjourned at four, 5.43 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Steve. See you next time. Thank you all. See you next time. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Yep. Bye.